Pop it. Twist it. Pull it. Pull it. Pop it. Twist it. Pull it. Pop it. Twist it. You've seen the Bop It. Now let's take a look at the Finch It. Let's play Bop It. Medium level. Upside down. Upside down. Shake me. Left wing up. Tap me. Left wing up. Level. Shake me. Beat down. Shake me. Right wing up. Upside down. Upside down. Beak up. Beak down. Right wing up. Beak down. Upside down. Beak down. Beak up. Upside down. Right wing up. Left wing up. Shake me. Shake. Oh. Shake me. Okay. 25 times. The Finchit program is another take on Bop It, where instead of actually using a little Bop It machine, you're going to use the Finch. Let's take a look at the design of the solution. Before you get started, before you sit down at your computer and just get programming, because I know that's what you want to do, you just start with the heading and do the things that you know how to do, and then you get stuck. So instead of going that route, design a solution first. Here are some things that can help you out as you plan your program. You're going to use the six Boolean helper functions you created for Finch Which Way. That means you already have a good chunk of this project already done. And I do expect you to just copy them and paste them into a new program. Don't retype them, but don't change the other program either. You need to keep Which Way, and you're going to have a new program, copy and paste. It's your code. You're welcome to use it again and again. Those helper functions with the beak up, beak down, all that, those are going to be your actions for each turn. And your finch will be your game controller. The overall design of your program is going to be a while loop. You're going to loop while the player performs the action, and you're going to count each time that they perform it, stop when they miss. Here's a more detailed algorithm. You're going to start by importing the modules that you need. So think about which ones you need and what methods or functions you're going to use from each module. You are going to use, or you are allowed to use, one global variable that's going to be for count because you're going to use it in at least two functions. You could take, uh, you could declare it in main and pass it in as a parameter, but it gets a little tricky because then you have to make a return value. And for this project, it's just easier to use it as a global variable. Remember to use, you know, to declare it global in any function that you use it so the value can change. But um, I would strongly recommend that you do that. Define your finch object, and you're going to be using a Boolean variable for your loop. We've done this before in other programs. Kind of think about what while, keep going, or while, not done. That keep going or not done or, or done, those are your Boolean variables, true or false. So, the best way to do your while loop for this program is to use a Boolean variable, not a counter or not one of the other functions or methods of the, the uh, finch like a temperature or, or an um, obstacle. Really you want to stop when they don't perform the action. So that's going to be a Boolean. You could do while correct or while not done. Make sure you initialize that that Boolean variable first so your loop will start. You should give some kind of an introduction. It could be a paragraph. It could just be a let's start playing. So it could be really simple, but you should have some kind of introduction and then a short delay. Let the person get ready. You don't want to just click run and boom, you're giving them a direction. Give them a chance to get set themselves ready. So a short introduction and a short delay. Then you're going to start your while loop. You're going to continue while the, the player performs the action. Inside this loop, you're going, to take, you're going to give turns. Each turn is going to ask for an action. We're going to take a look at that in detail in just a second. When the loop ends, you want to display how many actions were performed. So you did 16 right. You did 20 right. You know, that kind of thing, just like Bop it does. 
So what happens in each turn? Here are some basic steps that you need to perform in each turn. You do need to get a random number for the choice or for the action. Think about the range of random numbers that you need and how can you determine that you really are in that range. That's going to be an important step right there. Then depending on the number, the random number, you're going to display the action. You're going to say what they need to do. So I might choose that one represents speak up, two represents speak down, so on and so forth. So if my random number is a one, of course you're going to have if statements. So everything we've been learning in programming you're going to be using here. Conditions, loops, methods, it's all stuff that you already know how to do. It's putting it all together. So with if statements, if it's one, I have to actually use a print statement because unfortunately the finch will not speak for us. It would be great if it did, but I do not know of any uh, speech recognition, any speech uh, patterning for Python. They have it for other languages, but we're just going to have to display the action. Then we have to have some kind of a delay, some kind of a sleep for that person to perform the action. They can't just do it instantly because they have to read it. So it's going to be up to you to determine how much time to give them to perform that action. The smaller the number, the faster the game. And the harder the level of difficulty. Then inside your turn, you have to determine if the action was performed. So if I said beak up, did the person indeed put the beak up? This is where you're going to use your Boolean helper functions. Then another if. If the action is performed, increment your counter. And if it's not, then you want to do something with your Boolean control variable so that your loop would end. Here are the requirements. This is what is expected of you for this program. You are expected to use your six Boolean helper functions. You are expected to use a main function where most all the work is going to happen. If it doesn't all happen in the function, the main function is at least calling the other functions where the action does happen, which is what it should be doing, because you must use at least one other function. So besides the six and the main, you have to have at least one other function. You could have more, but you cannot have less. You will be using a global counter. It should be the only global counter. And you should have a while loop with a Boolean variable for the condition. This is going to count as an assessment. So first of all, it's important to do it. It's going to be 70% of the grade. And there will be a rubric. So be familiar with the rubric. Make sure you're completing all the requirements. With that said, there are many ways to accomplish this program. So even if everybody is going on the same algorithm, and using all the same basic things, your own unique touch to this should still be yours. Do it your way. What I don't want to see is two or three people finishing, then helping everybody else, or somebody says, oh, can I look at your code? And then I just see, you know, like three or four programs copied throughout the room. That's not doing it your way. So I want to be pretty clear about that. You can see what other people do, but you still need to do it your way. And it's not like, oh, there's only two or three ways, so which way are you? No, there's lots. So if there's 20 of you in the classroom, I should be able to see 20 unique solutions to this. Now, they might look very similar, but I still want to see your own take on how to do this problem. Here is my strong recommendation. You really need to use incremental development with this program. It's not that many steps, but each step is important, and you need to get it right. If you're doing 20, 30 lines of code and then running it, something's going wrong. It's like, where is it going wrong? And it can get really frustrating. So just do a little bit at a time. This is your key to success. You hopefully did this in Alice, and I really hope that you've been doing it in Python. Try a few lines of code at a time. Get it to work. Use a helper function if you want, just a testing function. It doesn't have to be part of your game at the end, but something that's just, um, as I'm doing this line of code, I can want to call just it. And does it work? Uh, use some of the techniques that you've been using throughout, like throw in a print statement. If I'm getting a random number and I want to make sure it's within this range, I could put in a print statement. I can run it several times, check the print, make sure that it's in that range. That's just a simple little step, but you'd be surprised at how getting a, the wrong random number can throw you off and it's hard to determine. And then once I know that my random numbers are correct, I can take out the print statement. I can go on to the next step, add in a print statement. What's really happening? Where am I in the code? Those little print statements can really help you out. When you know it's working right, take them on out. So test as you go. Check that your results are correct. And then add to it. 
Another recommendation with your incremental development is just start with a couple of actions. Even though you're going to have six or eight at the end, you don't have to start with all six. Start with just beak up and beak down and get it a turn to work correctly with beak up and beak down. If you know you can do it for two, then add in two more, kind of like how you did which weight. You got a little bit, then you added to it, then you added to it. This will really save you some frustration. Now, you've got the game done. You still have some time. What more can you do? to jazz up your game and to make it your own. You can add in a buzz or a beat color so as you're performing the actions not only can you say you got it correct but you could do a little buzz or you can make the beat turn a certain color. So think about other things the Finch can do besides just using the accelerate method and incorporate them in your game. You could also add in some custom messages so if they only get a few right you might have kind of a rude comment to them that they're falling asleep. Maybe if they have like between 5 and 20 correct, maybe it's a different message. Maybe if they've got over 20, you know, you call them a rock star. So think about besides just telling them how many they got right, add in a custom message. You can also include the actions tap and shake. You do not need Boolean functions for these like you did for the other six because they are already true and false. Remember the, uh, the whole purpose of a Boolean function is to return true or false. Tap and shake, already true and false. So you can throw them in with if statements. You do not need extra functions for them. It's just redundant. Another thing you can do is give the option of playing again without having to restart. So I finished once. I blew it. I only got five right. I want to play again. So instead of having to actually click run, maybe you ask me, do you want to play again? You've done this thing before. So that's a fairly simple addition to add to your game. If you are going to do that, Another thing you can do is keep track of the high score. So the first time I play, I've got my high score. I play again. Did I beat my other score or not? So keeping track of your high score is not that more, it's not that complicated. It can add another extra little thing to your game that makes it more fun. And one thing you might have noticed in, in my example was I had levels of difficulty. So I had a slower speed for easy and I had a higher speed for difficult. And that's a nice little touch you can add into your game is, is let them pick their level of difficulty. Or this is going to be the hardest challenge of all, so see if you're really up to it. You might notice if you if you've played Boppet before, it starts off, it doesn't have levels, it just starts off slow, but the speed gradually increases as the game progresses, so it's harder and harder to keep up. So this is something that you can do, like maybe after every five or six, or you can pick your number. After so many correct, it speeds up. And then after so many correct again, it speeds up again. Which means that your sleep number would decrease. You need a variable for it. But it's a great option, something else you can do to make it your own. So you want to you know, remember to do incremental development. Take a look at the rubric. Meet all the requirements. Be familiar with the algorithm. Have a plan. Decide what you can do to make it your own. Follow these steps and you'll be very successful and you'll have yet another fun game that you can share with your friends. Let's play Bop It. Medium. Right wing up. Beat down. Shake me. Tap me. Right wing up. Beat down. Upside down. Shake me. Seven times.